Sierra from Rusty Dog Decor. And in this video, I'm going to be making some DIY nightstands out of just a few materials. Enjoy the video. I'm guessing if you're watching this video right now, you're interested in how you can make some simple DIY nightstands and you're in luck because I'm going to show you exactly how I did just that. Now I managed to build two nightstands from a single sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood, a couple 1 by 4 by 8 boards for trim, and some scrap quarter inch plywood pieces that I had left over from another project. All things considered, that's not bad for two nightstands. With the price of plywood still being so expensive right now, I had to make sure I was as efficient as possible when it came to cutting my sheet down. Now, I used to try and figure this all out in my head, but prior to starting this project, I found a pretty resourceful tool that I figured I would share with you all. There's a website called OptiCutter that has a free cutless calculator where you can plug in all of your dimensions for the pieces that you need to cut from the plywood sheet, and it maps out exactly how to cut them. I used the calculator prior to cutting down my plywood sheet and I was able to get all of my pieces cut for two nightstands out of one sheet and maybe only had about a quarter inch of piece left over. I'm sure if I tried to figure that out on my own I would have wasted way more than that. I'll leave the link to the website in the description box below if you want to check it out. This project also marked the initiation of another tool, the Craig AccuCut Track Saw. Now I got this track saw system over Christmas and this was actually my first time getting to put it to use. It made much quicker work of ripping that plywood sheet down. The one problem is it's not quite long enough to rip an 8 foot sheet of plywood long ways. So for that task I had to try and find the straightest board I could find to use as a straight edge. One of these days I'm going to invest in an 8 foot long straight edge because finding a straight 8 foot board is pretty difficult. So anyways, for this cut I had to rely on the good old husband track saw system since he has much longer arms than me and offered to put them to use. Following my cut list, I cut each of the pieces that I would need to build the carcass of my two nightstands. I made sure to label each of my pieces to help when it came time for assembly. With all my pieces cut and labeled, my next step was to add a quarter inch groove to each of my pieces for a quarter inch thick sheet of plywood to sit down inside of to be my back support. Now there are a couple different ways that you can cut this groove, but my preferred method is to run each piece through my router table using a quarter inch straight bit. So I got my router table set up to cut my groove exactly where I need it and then I routed out a groove on each of my plywood pieces. Now it's time to add some pocket holes to my pieces. I drilled pocket holes in all of my support pieces as well as the underside of my bottom and middle shelves. These pocket holes are what I will use to attach everything together later. And it was during this process that I had to stop a couple times and pull out the tweezers for some pretty gnarly splinters. In fact, tweezers might just be one of the most used tools in my shop. Anyways, back to pocket holing, which is a new word that I just made up. Now that I had all these pieces just lying around my shop, I figured I better do something with them. So I decided it was assembly time. This assembly was a pretty straightforward one. I basically just needed to figure out where I wanted to attach everything and then attach everything together using some wood glue and pocket hole screws. Now I have to confess that when I first started dabbling into woodworking as a hobby, I would sort of just eyeball everything when it came time to assembly and clamp things as flush as I could get them and then screw my pocket holes in. 
While this might work for some joints, I learned the hard way that, you know, sometimes shift happens. My pieces would shift around just slightly and things would no longer be square. Things not being perfectly square isn't always the end of the world as a beginner woodworker, but as I got more advanced in my builds and started to build things that required things like drawers and doors, I needed to place a lot more focus on making sure that everything is square during assembly. A really helpful tool that I found for keeping things square is these 90 degree clamping squares that you see me using. I found this set off Amazon for a fraction of the price that the woodpecker ones sell for. Yes, yes, I'm sure the woodpecker ones might be better than these, but if I just purchased all the best version of tools out there that I'd like to, then I'd be like, I am never going to financially recover from this. These fit in my budget a little better, and from what I can tell, they seem to work great at keeping everything square. If you want to check them out for yourselves, I'll leave a link to them in the description box below. Also, just a little side note, I went ahead and primed and painted two coats of paint on all of the interior facing sides. Once everything is assembled, it becomes much tougher to paint the interior faces very well, so I like to knock that out before assembly. Now that I've got my nightstand mostly assembled here, my next step is I want to add some face framing to cover up some of these plywood edges here. So I'm going to take a board and rip it down to an inch and three quarters and I'll attach that onto the front side of my nightstands here. Whenever I'm cutting a board that I purchased from Lowe's or Home Depot for the first time, I make sure to square off one of the edges first before I make my measurement. I've run into one too many boards that haven't had a square edge and it's throwing my measurement completely off. For my face frame for these nightstands, I took some 1x3x8 boards and I cut them according to my measurements and then I ripped them to a width of 1 and 3 quarter inches which would allow me to have a half inch overhang on each side. I also like to go ahead and sand all of my face frame pieces to their final grit before attaching them to my carcass. I rounded over all the edges as well with my palm router and a 1 8 inch round over bit. I probably could have done this step a little quicker using my router table, but I was being lazy and didn't feel like changing out the bit that I was going to need to use later, but hey, I got it done eventually. For the bottom trim piece, I wanted to add a bit of a curve to the profile. I have a very precise technique that I use when it comes to adding curves to my pieces. Are you ready to hear what it is? Okay, here it goes. Basically, I walk around my shop until I find whatever piece of junk lying around that has a similar rounded profile. Then I use that to trace my curve onto the piece. Very technical stuff. But in all seriousness, you can get more technical with it and use, I don't know, math. But I try to use as little of that as I have to. I measure out and draw a line that looks close to what I'm going for and then I use that line to cut out on my bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, you could also use a jigsaw or something similar. All of my face frame pieces are now ready to be attached to my carcass and I simply attach them using some wood glue and a few brad nails. I made sure to leave a half inch overhang on both of my side pieces.
Another little side note, I've been tossing around the idea in my brain of creating some detailed build plans for these nightstands. Let me know in the comments section if this is something you'd like to see and I will consider making those available soon. After attaching my face frame to my carcass, I added the quarter inch sheet of plywood that I cut for the back and it was really starting to look like a nightstand. There was just one thing missing, a door. Okay, technically two things since we are going to need a top for these things, but we'll get to that later. For now, let's build a door. Now what kind of door should I make for these nightstands? Those are the kinds of questions that keep me up at night, guys. No, seriously, I couldn't sleep because I couldn't make up my mind. See, normally I opt to make a shaker style cabinet door using some rail and style bits on my router table. And also typically in the past I would use either inset or overlay European style hinges. But I recently ran out of all of those style hinges that I had on hand and I hadn't had a chance to order more. While I was digging through my cabinet hardware drawer I discovered a crazy amount of a certain type of hinge that I must have ordered by mistake a long time ago and forgot to return thinking maybe I would use it eventually and by George I decided that that day was going to be today. So all of that to say that for these doors I still went with a shaker style door but with a twist. The hinges that I used were actually 3 8 inch inset hinges so I needed to route a 3 8 inch groove all along my door so that my hinges would fit inside of that groove. I'm not gonna lie, trying to figure out how this hinge actually worked initially while reading through the minimal instructions had me like, This is getting confusing. But after dialing it in on some scrap pieces, I finally figured it out and could start making my door. Now, like I said before, I usually make my doors using rail and style bits on my router table. But there are other ways to make doors if that's too advanced for you. When I first started, I used pocket holes to join everything together and gradually started to work my way up to making them on the router table. Now to make this style door on the router table, I used two different bits, one for my rails and one for my styles. Now getting these bits styled into the right measurements can take a bit of practice. Rather than explain that whole process now, I will probably make a separate video dedicated to that. I like to run my rail pieces through first. I would highly recommend using some sort of jig when running these pieces through to prevent any sort of kickback. I picked up this one from Rockler which works really well at keeping everything clamped down and my hands away from the router bit. Once I have all my rails routed, I then change my bit and start routing out the groove for my styles. my pieces for my doors fully routed out, all that was left was to assemble them together using some wood glue and clamp. these doors was one of the last steps that I had to complete for the base of the nightstands. With that done, I could move on to finishing the tops for the nightstands. Alright, I got my tops for my nightstands cut to size. And now there's a couple different steps you could take um, now just depending on your personal preference. Because this is plywood, it has these exposed plywood edges here where you can see all the different uh, layers that have been glued up together to make this plywood. And you know, you could just paint over that and just leave it be and that's completely fine and that's up to you. I personally uh, don't love the look of the exposed plywood edge. So if you want to be able to cover that up, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. Uh, you could just add some wood trim all around it and uh, you know hide that exposed edge. But what I personally want to do is I'm going to use some of this iron on edge banding that I'll just cut to size. Now this is super simple to apply, let me show you how. It was during the middle of me promising to show you guys how to apply this edge banding that I was rudely interrupted by one of the cutest creatures I've ever seen. I guess he didn't like me giving the camera all of the attention and decided that I needed to take a break and focus all of my attention on him. 
So that's exactly what I did. All right, there are a couple different tools that you're gonna need to do this. One of them being an iron here. We've also got some scissors, the box cutter, any sort of block or roller that you can use to, um, to press and uh, get the adhesive to attach. Um, and then I have a little block plane here that I'm gonna be using to trim everything up. So let me show you how this is done. So basically, you take one side that need and always cut it a little bit long to give you a little bit of room you definitely don't want to make it too short go ahead and cut all my strips here if you've got any uh, little bits of plywood here a wood uh, spurs. I'm gonna go ahead and just sand those off so that make sure you get a really good fit. So as you can see on this edge band in here, it has adhesive on one side of it that once you warm that up and heat it up, it actually will adhere to the plywood. So that's what the iron's for. Once I get this on there, I'll apply it with the iron to allow that glue to heat up and adhere to the plywood. Okay, so next step is super easy. You just take the edge that you want to apply your strip to. Make sure you get it good and lined up on both edges. All right, that looks pretty good to me. I'm just gonna take your iron here and apply some heat. And pressure. Now initially I just get it uh, on there just to get it to adhere and then I come back and I make sure that I angle my iron so to make sure I'm getting it on the edges as well. I'm going to make sure that all that glue adheres to the plywood. pieces dry for about 15 minutes it's time to go ahead and cut off the excess so I can apply veneer to the other sides basically how I do it is I just take a little box cutter here and I trim off my excess now what I need to do is if you feel here I've got a little bit um, you know there that needs to be trimmed down on each side. And even though this is roughly three quarter inch edge banding, and this is three quarter inch plywood, it's not always gonna line up perfectly, so you're gonna have to trim it down a little bit. And they make a couple different things that you could use to trim it. Um, there's something like I bought this, it's called Banded Edge Trimmer. Uh, let me give you a little advice, save your money, don't buy this, uh, it's not the best. I've tried to use it and while it will work some, I just feel like it's more hassle than it's worth. So for the little amount that I need to take off, I'm just gonna use something like this block plane here. Um, that'll help me get this really flush. Getting the edge banding for the tops completed, it was time to get these nightstands ready to be painted. I filled any nail holes or imperfections with wood putty and then gave everything a final sanding before priming each piece by hand. Since I'd already painted the interior faces, this was a pretty quick process. Also, can I just mention in regards to that last video that my favorite part of my time lapse videos is seeing just how much Murphy's tail keeps wagging, that and following the tennis ball around. It's good stuff.
Okay, back to painting. After getting everything sanded and primed, I was ready to apply my paint. To do that, I moved everything outside and set up an area that I could spray my paint on. And apparently, I set up too nice of an area because someone tried to make it their new home. Hey bud. I don't think that's the best place to lay. Unless you want to turn into a white golden retriever. For painting these nice sands, I'm going to be using Sherwin-Williams paint in pure white using my Home Right Finish Max sprayer. Now I bought this paint sprayer about a year ago for 100 bucks, not knowing if it would be worth it or not. You know, I'd heard a lot of complaints about paint sprayers clogging up and just becoming useless. Let me just say that I've put this thing through the ringer over the last year and it is still spraying just fine. I do make sure to clean it well between each use, but I figure if nothing else, I've already got my 100 bucks out of it. I'll link it below if you want to check it out for yourself. After spraying three coats of paint, it was time to put the finishing touches on these nightstands. Remember that crazy long and arguably unnecessary explanation about cabinet hinges earlier in this video? I know, I know what you're thinking. Here we go again. All I'm gonna say is that these types of hinges ended up being extremely easy to install. Really the hardest part was just routing that groove out, but installation was a breeze. I guess sometimes things look scarier than they actually are. I attached the doors to the face frame with a few screws and then added some cabinet knobs to finish them off. Since I guess these nightstands would be pretty useless without a top, I had one final task and that was to attach the tops to the base of my nightstand. Now, I typically attach tops to things using some of these figure 8 clips shown here, and I had every intention of using those on these nightstands, but I ran into a bit of a problem. There really wasn't enough room for me to easily screw into those since they were so close to the edge. I tried for like a really long time guys, so it's not like I quit easy. Ultimately, I decided to just screw a couple of screws through my support pieces into the top using my right angle drill attachment because again, no room. Since plywood is pretty stable, I think this should be fine because it shouldn't move around as much seasonally as solid wood might. After getting the tops attached, I think I can now finally say that I've made something that looks eerily similar to nightstands. How about that? I personally think it's pretty cool that I was able to make both of these from a single sheet of plywood and just a few other materials. And while I might have used some more advanced tools like a router for some of the steps, there are definitely lots of alternative ways that you can do the same thing. So I still feel like this project is easily attainable for even your beginner woodworker. And that, my friends, is going to bring this video to a close. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to help my channel grow, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for future videos. I'd like really appreciate it. I hope this video inspired you to go build something awesome. I'll see you guys again real soon. Bye.